Well, good morning. I think we'll have a few more people joining us over the next few minutes, but it makes sense to get started. Um, I want to welcome you all. And I'm Charles Rutledge. I'm the Executive Director of Sunrise County Economic Council. I want to welcome you to our annual economic summit. Um, we're really excited, actually, with the material and presenters we have today. Um, it's a slightly different take than we'll, what we've done in recent years um, with a real focus on presentations about and a chance to question and speak with um, key leaders in our region who are you know, either proposing major investments, you know, new businesses, new capital investments, or have really innovated in how they're using resources to deliver services to businesses and individuals in Washington County. Um, and I'll be frank, one of the reasons why we chose this approach is it's been a really, really tough 18, 19 months as we've been going through the pandemic as a region. Um, we've lost, I mean, we've had over 1,700 cases of COVID in the county. We've lost at least 20 of our neighbors to the disease. Um, we think we've lost as many as 30 of our neighbors to substance use disorder over the same time. Um, we've had we have 400 people more counted as unemployed um, in the county. Um, and we have 800 less people in the civilian labor force. So, and this at the same time, as in many of our businesses are really struggling um, from lack of staff and lack of employees. Um, so we have all been through a lot of personal challenges. We as a region have been through um, really one of the biggest disruptions we've seen in our lifetime. Um, and in that sense, and there's no, I don't want to diminish it in any way. It is a serious crisis we are living through, have been living through. Um, but there are some really significant investments that are proposed for our county and some very innovative leadership and program development and resource um, development that has been done by some of our colleagues. And we thought that this would be a good chance to look to the future and to look to some of these major investments that will be coming our way. Um, our keynote um, speaker will be Megan Sorby, who will be talking about Kingfish, Maine, which I'll talk about more in a few minutes. Um, our, we have other presenters um, speaking about, from Down East Institute, speaking about um, the potential of commercializing new technology and shellfish aquaculture and what that could mean for essentially family farm scale aquaculture in you know, the near shore environment in Washington County. Um, we'll be hearing from Down East Wind, which is a proposal for a, a large scale wind development in Western Washington County that will create a significant amount of construction jobs and quite a lot of revenue from taxes and other spending in the community over the life of the project. Um, we'll be hearing from Down East Broadband, an incredibly innovative and successful local effort to solve the broad, broadband problem um, at the community scale. Um, and one that's expanding and reaching more communities. Um, we also will be hearing from um, partners, SEC staff and partners, who have found new ways of reaching businesses and people who want to start businesses during this during the pandemic, and a way of really having a broader and different reach than we've ever had before in our attempts to reach businesses. And we'll also be hearing from leaders from Healthy Acadia and Aristic Mental Health Center, um, who really have been fighting the good fight in providing services for our neighbors with mental health challenges and with substance use disorder um, and have in recent years really taken a lead in bringing resources from the state and from the federal government to really build new supports for our neighbors um, who are facing substance use disorder. And finally, we'll have a presentation or in the breakouts, we'll have a, a presentation from industry and nonprofit leaders that are proposing a vertical launch facility for nano satellites in Down East Maine. Um, something that, um, if realized, could make us a key center in what could be one of the dominant industries of the next century. Um, so we hope that taken together, um, these presentations will really help us think about what comes next as we, you know, as we keep on working our way through the pandemic as we look hopefully to a future where the pandemic is behind us, um, to really think about what Washington County can be in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years. 
So with that, I want to, again, thank you all for making time and um, being here together. Um, and I'd like to introduce Megan Sorby, who will be our keynote speaker. Um, she is one of the local managers um, of Kingfish, Maine, um, which as you will hear, is one of the most significant proposed investments in Washington County since the paper mill and pulp mill in St. Croix. Um, in scale, you know, it's similar to the new tissue machines, um, but it really is bringing an entirely new industry to Washington County that could be, again, a major industry in the next century, um, as well as a significant um, kind of immediate um, creator of construction jobs and a not insignificant amount of long-term full-time full year-round jobs once operations begin. Um, and Megan now is actually working to develop the broodstock, uh, working in partnership with the University of Maine, the Center for Cooperative Aquaculture Research. Um, but I'll, with no further ado, actually, I will um, turn the floor over to Megan to tell us about the project. Thanks so much, Charles. Um, good morning, everyone. And um, it is really great to be here and see so many familiar faces, um, but also faces that I haven't met yet. Um, and uh, we are just really humbled that Charles asked us to participate today. Um, I know that um, our Netherlands team and specifically our CEO, Ohad Maiman, um, really, uh, is still battling with the fact that the US uh, hasn't opened travel yet, but very soon. And uh, he's very much looking forward to, uh, to being back visiting with um, people in Jonesport uh, as soon as possible. But um, we're gonna let him say a few words today um, via video. But um, we'll just jump right in, I think. And um, anybody let me know if something's not coming through all right. Um, and we'll try and hopefully there um, there is a video in the middle of this presentation. Um, so, um, but we realize that with varying um, with varying internet um, strengths around for everyone, um, it may not it may, it may be a bit, a bit glitchy. So, um, our friend Diana um, is going to put the link to that video. Um, in the chat box so that if you want to go back and watch it later, um, that, that that is easy for you to do. But um, as Charles said, um, the Kingfish Company has um, been in Maine now since around 2019, um, working to uh, put together a facility um, in Jonesport. Um, we kind of see ourselves, obviously, as, as the new guy in town. Um, but as we've, we've said many times before, um, we, we also feel quite at home um, here in Jonesport. And um, I think this is largely due to the fact that um, there are amazingly friendly and wonderful people, um, wonderful welcoming people here in Jonesport. Um, it may also be due to the fact that um, there are a lot of strong similarities um, that this area has with where we first established a farm in Zealand in the Netherlands. But it also may be due to the fact that we find aquaculture could be a very strong fit for the next steps for Washington County and the existing local economy. Um, and whichever that prevailing reason is on, on any given day, I think the ongoing question um, that Charles, you know, alluded to um, in his opening is the fact, um, you know, how, how does aquaculture fit here and what, what can it do for um, the long, long term um, economy here in, in Washington County and, and in Jonesport um, in the case of the Kingfish Company. So I, I think in, in starting to talk about this, we have to talk about the need. And in light of the very tough last year and a half um, plus that we've had, um, I think we have to talk about sustainability as well as economic resiliency. While these are, are two separate things, um, you know, 
talking about our first our ability to um, to be sustainable, to utilize our resources without taking from future generations, um, goes hand in hand with economic resiliency um, and and the ability to adapt and react and grow um, from different challenges and experiences. Um, and, and really, I think what sometimes gets missed in sustainability, at least in, in our industry, um, is the fact that so many people are talking about the environmental sustainability. And that's only one piece of this feedback loop um, that, that we have. You know, there are three key pieces to it and, and there's no long-term success to be had unless we consider all three of those pieces. I think something can be environmentally sustainable or environmentally friendly, but if you are not economically viable in that endeavor, um, it, it's never going to last. Um, that same development could be economically viable, but it comes at the cost of a living wage um, that is appropriate for the area, which leads to high workforce turnover um, and ultimately a, a, an exodus from that job field or, or even from a region. And so I think without pulling these pieces together, um, we, we will miss what opportunities are, are out there. And, and this is where we think aquaculture can, and specifically, recirculating aquaculture and, and the Kingfish Company can really add to Washington County and, and be one of those opportunities, these, these transformative opportunities for an area. And this diversification is key. Um, I think to identify these opportunities, we have to think outside of, of what is, um, has been the norm in the past. We need to identify and evaluate how prepared we are um, for the future and to accept new types of development. But in saying that, it doesn't mean that we should leave our community history and, and traditions behind um, in order to achieve those future goals. Um, our goal in, in bringing Kingfish to Maine um, is to work with the community's strengths um, and, and existing positive attributes. And specifically for Washington County and, and Maine as a whole, this is where we turn to seafood. Um, seafood here is iconic. Um, it's known worldwide. It has some of the highest value products um, on the market. Um, and, and we all know we're, we're talking about lobster, but there's plenty of others as well. But um, this is, where, this is where aquaculture and, and specifically kingfish can add to that reputation. It's providing that diversification um, of a skill set that's already ingrained in the community. It can allow for Washington County to maintain that strong seafood product tradition while building that resiliency that we we're talking about um, in a process that we feel meets all of these sustainability pillars. And with that, I wanna let um, our Netherlands team say a few words and give you a little bit of background into the company and, uh, and a little sneak peek here in Maine. So, let's see if this... I'm not aware of any other major food group where there is such a challenge in creating more. And that's where we come in. I think seafood is quite unique in the sense that when you compare it to other major food groups, it's one of the last frontiers where, as humanity, we're still figuring out how to make enough of it. With global population rising, with the understanding that seafood is a high-value protein and a healthy alternative, there is a need for more. What we're doing in our rest system is trying to minimize the impact we have on the environment by actually circulating the water multiple times. The water we extract from the Oosterschelde, we, we filter uh, and we clean, make sure there's no parasites whatsoever, reuse it on the farm and then send it back after we've cleaned it again. 
It's all about sustainability at Kingfish Zeeland. We want to comply with all sustainability standards like an ASC or a BAP. These are choices we feel that both fit the, the character of the company but also are the right values for our times. A fish farm is uh, a very innovative infrastructure and we're growing the fish from A to Z, from the egg to the plate. We start from uh, hatchery, from breeders to have the hatchery process and uh, grow them all the way to market size. But we also do processing, we do the marketing and sales ourselves. Everything is integrated. We always go for the highest level of perfection when packing our products and delivering to clients. Yeah, doing something everybody else does is not interesting. Being able to, to have these broodstock fish here reproduce them so you're not relying on any natural resources anymore and you can still put such a beautiful product in the market that's the goal of, of kingfish the technology we operate can theoretically produce as much capacity as we build Kingfish Main is the expansion of what we have established in the Netherlands. And for us, the biggest factor is finding that site that provides the most important thing, which is good water. And Jonesport definitely has plenty of that. It's a logical choice. It's a massive market with very limited fish production in the US. It's a species that we believe will do extremely well there. So it's a logical choice to go to the US. We have a young team, which is very dedicated. A lot of nationalities, so a lot of backgrounds and a lot of cultures, of course. Yeah, it is a 24-7 thing, so uh, there's always somebody here to, uh, to look after the, the fish. We want to strive all together to, to make it better and better all the time. It is a big challenge, but uh, with uh, the right people, the right technology, we're doing it. It's an extremely versatile fish. It's a fantastic product to work with. Uh, it can be consumed raw, half cooked. Uh, it can go on the grill even at very high temperature and it's always a great result. It's not seasonal. It's absolutely top quality. And all the chefs we've talked to from Michelin star, everybody is very happy to work with the fish. We've proven that the species is the right one, proven that the technology works. It's quite rare to have the opportunity to join a new industry on the ground level. There's a benefit to the first few that establish a position. Oh. I'm there we go. Do I still have everybody? It says I'm still sharing, so hopefully it all is continuing and hopefully that wasn't too glitchy for anyone. But um, hopefully that gives you a little taste of the Kingfish Company overall. We are um, really excited to introduce ourselves um, and continue to talk about what we do. Um, this is a photo of our site in the Netherlands um, in the very beginning. Well, a little, a little after the very beginning. Um, Kingfish Company started about 10 years ago in a tiny research facility garage um, with a couple of tanks of brood fish um, and that gentleman, Sonder, that you saw there along with our COO, Case Clote, and um, just researching this species, yellowtail kingfish. And, um, and, it, and it grew. Uh, we, we took that, um, we took that concept and we began to scale it up. What you see here is um, the first uh, plant that we built um, and it was completed in about 2015. This is just before they put the roof on everything. What you see are the round tanks where um, the fish are, uh, the rectangular concrete um, containment that you see to the left-hand side is um, filtration units and um, what we, what we try to show here um, is this, is this is the kind of space, this is the location where, um, where we first established. And, um, and in this facility, we were growing around 600 metric tons. 
Now, I know that that number probably doesn't mean very much. Um, so I wanted to put a little framing to it. Um, every individual in the US um, eats an average of about 20 pounds of seafood a year, 19.2, I think. Um, and so if you take the total population of the US, just in the US alone, we consume around 2.9 million metric tons. So in the scope of things, kingfish is this tiny little piece, um, but we are slowly getting bigger and bigger. Um, so in 2019, we took this facility and we doubled its capacity to produce around 1,200 metric ton and are currently in construction to uh, increase the facility to around 2,500 metric ton. And again, to put some framing to those numbers, you know, um, lobster harvest um, here in, in the U.S., 80% uh, of which comes only from Maine, um, is around 91,000 metric tons. So again, we're, we're still a, a, a small piece, but what we do bring is um, a big piece of community that we think will be beneficial to this area. We have to... Um, as you heard in the video, we have to answer to our own industry in terms of sustainability standards um, and, and quality standards. This comes with some of the certifications that you may have heard about, maybe not. We have a best aquaculture practices certification. We were the first land-based RAS facility to do that. Um, and an ASC certification or an Aquaculture Stewardship Council certification. And we were the first certified source of yellowtail kingfish um, to, be, to be ASC certified. These aren't the only standards that we want to answer to as a company. Um, we also want to answer to our community. That beautiful waterway that you see in the background, that is the Oosterscheld, which is um, part of a Natura 2000 nature reserve. Um, this is where we draw our water, but this is also where um, we send our effluent water. So we are held to extremely high standards in terms of what um, we filter, remove, and, and ultimately clean about our process before we reintroduce that water into um, the channel there. We, the, the neighboring community that we're in, um, as we said, it has a lot of similarities um, to Down East Maine and is that large agricultural presence, but also large fishing community presence. Um, we, we hope to bring a lot of the benefits that um, we've been able to bring to Zealand and the Netherlands um, here to Jonesport and to greater Washington County. I think, one of the biggest parts of, of Kingfish Company and our goals is that we, we pride ourselves on that vertical integration, that true egg to plate process. Um, it's not just the hands-on growing of the fish, um, but everything that goes on around that from the design and engineering of our systems and our facilities to construction planning, um, all the way through to, to market logistics, packaging, sales, all of that happens in-house or, or with teams, local teams that we, we know and trust. Um, the thing is about it um, is the fact that we, we don't think that that will be impressive here in Jonesport or in Washington County because um, because the lobster industry has been doing this for years. They are their own well-oiled, vertically integrated machine from boat repair, maintenance operation, all the way through to getting those lobsters to market. Um, and, and this is at the heart of why Kingfish um, said, you know, answers the question, why Maine, why Jonesport? It is building on that tradition um, but adding or bringing this new technology to it, kind of what Charles was saying about the potential to, to bring some of these new fields and industries into this area. Um, we we want to rely on the skills and experience that are already here to help bring this new technology, this new seafood production here. It's not wild caught, it's farming, so it is different, um, but it's, it, it does work with those same principles. Um, we design our systems to reduce new amounts of seawater needed, 
Um, we rely solely on seawater as a marine, as farming a marine species, so not working with freshwater. Um, we connect with green energy sources um, as much as they're available. So in the Netherlands, there's a high availability of, of wind product. Um, and so we utilize that, we utilize solar panels um, and we identify new husbandry practices all the time that make our process that much more efficient. Ideal feeds, better water conditions to optimize that growth. And ultimately, that social piece, employing a workforce that no matter what aspect of, of this type of project that they're involved with, they feel that pride and that sense of ownership at, over what is leaving the building, what is leaving the, the facility. And, and the biggest change that we see, we hope all of those pieces um, are, are transferred here to Maine. The biggest change that we have is that we're getting a bit bigger a little faster here. Um, this is a, a visual rendering of, of our facility that um, we are in the process of permitting here in Maine. Um, what you'll see from the water down there uh, on the left hand side of your screen is um, the barn style building. Um, and that really is all you'll see from the water um, is our pump house, what is bringing in um, that water from Chandler Bay for us. What you won't see from the road, from the water side, are these two buildings that sit at the heart of our operations. Um, they house our tanks, so the smaller of those buildings, um, has, is our hatchery where, um, as you saw, brood stock, egg production, and ultimately fish that are about the size of your, your thumbnail um, before they move to the larger building where those fish move between progressively larger systems until they reach market size. This is kind of a, a little bit difficult to, to realize the scale um, just from a picture, so we'll try and provide a little bit of framing to that. But um, what you see in those two buildings is about a uh, little over 10 acres under roof. Um, but that's also 10 acres of solar panels that help power our building. Um, so to put it in, in perspective for, for those that aren't that familiar with what 10 acres can be, um, it's about eight football fields under roof. Um, and then inside that building, to the right hand side of your screen, this is what you have going on. Um, tanks, feeding systems, people, um, and of course the fish. So we have a lot of water moving around. Um, we, these tanks, um, to, to give you some measurements, um, I'm only about five foot three, but um, these tanks are about 36 feet in diameter and um, they run a little over 12 feet into, um, in, in height. Um, so for reference, um, they're about 60,000 gallons, which um, in, in terms of the entire systems, we will have um, about four Olympic swimming pools just for the big systems alone. So there are multiple phases to this project, um, all of which we think have a lot to add to the community. Um, the construction phase, um, which we still have ongoing in the Netherlands and are hoping to break ground here um, in the early part of 2022 um, for the main facility, um, will take about two and a half to three years to complete. Um, and that's everything from groundworks to laying all of our process piping, um, but also all the things that you're familiar with with any build, so domestic water supply and, um, and electrical lines, um, concrete over top. What you see here, um, again, are some of our filtration units in the Netherlands. Um, they're about 20 feet in height. Um, and what isn't pictured here, um, which we think and are very excited about for Maine, for Washington County, um, is the team and the relationship building that we have done and that we aim to do um, here in Jonesport. Um, we have staff living in three surrounding villages uh, in Zealand. Our team go to the local shops uh, to grab lunch. Um, we sell fish in the local marketplace. Um, 
Our facility also hosts students from the nearby University of Wagenen. Um, it often leads to long-term employment, both on the construction and development side, but also on our operations side. Um, we feel that the, the education opportunities, um, especially on site with us are endless. And um, that is something that we continue to be uh, truly excited about um, the reception of that here in Washington County with the various educational institutions. The community integration process um, through our project phases um, is crucial to the success of a facility like ours. We can't stress that enough. Um, and, and that's why um, you've probably seen one or some of us around um, in, in multiple facets. Um, there are two of our colleagues here who um, have spent a tremendous amount of time at Jonesport High School setting up a small recirculating aquaculture system to teach some students to grow tilapia. They are now expanding that project themselves um, and adding plants to it um, in, this, in this term. Um, and then we're also in, in as Charles said, working uh, in UMaine's facility um, to start our broodstock operations. So bringing fish from the Netherlands, getting them acclimated, ready to spawn and provide eggs here um, and working with um, the professors um, to add to their lecture series um, and to employ students. It's the implementation of a model that we've had in the Netherlands that we've found great success. And again, we see these benefits um, greatly serving the community here. So how does kingfish, how does recirculating aquaculture address what we were talking about before? Sustainability, resiliency. Um, and, and each of these pillars, again, are so crucial to long-term viability um, for our industry and, and specifically for our company. Um, from the environmental aspect, I think we've, we've had a few words about that from our Netherlands team. And, I'm, I'm sure I've said far too many words about it in this, in this few minutes, but um, we continue to implement state-of-the-art technology um, that reduces our water usage, that allows us to source greener energy, clean practices, and really contracting with those suppliers for fish feed, um, for, for chemicals for our process that um, that employ those same values of environmental stewardship. From the economic perspective, this is where we see huge benefit um, for ourselves in Washington County to collaborate and work together. Um, uh, an operation like this is um, dependent on the community in which it, it resides um, and will bring um, a new level of, of um, accessibility to infrastructure that maybe wasn't as accessible before. So um, an increased power supply for what, we, what we're what we building is necessary, but that also may supply some of the other projects that are being proposed right now in Washington County. It may also allow for um, more access to that green energy we've been talking about. Um, the, the addition of new jobs. I don't think we've talked about it, but in our facility alone, we expect hiring operations that will employ around 70 people with um, an additional 30 plus um, in processing and packaging. And um, those are full-time full -time, um, year-round positions. Um, the, as Christo was saying on our video, we, we operate 24-7, 365. There's no seasonality to what we do. It's one of the big benefits of, of farming our, our seafood inside. From the social aspect, those quality jobs, but also that community involvement that we are talking about, which we are so excited about um, the participation opportunities that we've had, such as this, to get to know other businesses because it is 
um, truly apparent that um, other businesses within Washington County are placing such an emphasis and focus um, on the social sustainability of, of their developments and are really looking for ways that um, they can provide um, provide a, a better future for those working with them and those potential future employees. Um, it also comes down to, um, like we said, that improvement in infrastructure also goes to the social aspect. Um, it is the potential for more available, affordable housing for new development um, in terms of, of childcare or infrastructure that supports um, new new families. Um, and I think overall, it's one of the key pieces that we've heard highlighted over and over and again um, in our discussions about Washington County is the need for more of this. Um, we really think it's a unique opportunity um, as we come to, to Jonesport and, and to bring our technology in um, is, is to provide, but also listen and uh, become a member of of that community that's already working on these goals. As part of, of a way of quantifying some of these benefits, uh, we engaged with the University of Maine to complete an e economic impact assessment. Um, and I think it really helps to talk about it in terms of, of hard numbers. Um, it, they're not concrete, obviously, there are so many facets of this that change on a daily basis, but um, a, a model, an economic in-plan model, does the best it can with the data as it moves and changes. Um, but during the different phases that we talked about construction, um, it's projected that we'll add over 300 full and part-time jobs, with 180 of those being in Washington County. From an operation perspective, and this is full operation, so we will start operations while we're still in construction. Um, we'll start stocking fish on site as we um, complete the second half of the building with new systems. But in full operation by 2026, our, our result would be over 150 full and part-time jobs in Maine with 9.4 million in labor income and 126 of those jobs directly in Washington County with an increase of, of 8 million in labor income. Each direct employee of Kingfish would support an additional 1.2 employees within the state. And I think this goes back to what Charles started us off with, which is the fact that what happens in Washington County um, can have a massive impact on how the state is viewed for future development. And um, an operation like ours, like some of the other big projects that um, he discussed and that we'll hear from later today, all of these have the potential not just to provide a huge benefit to Washington County, to our, our own townships like Jonesport, but to the state as a whole and how we're viewed for potential new development and businesses. I think you could see from our video and, and hopefully for any of you that have visited us here at CCAR, we really pride ourselves um, at the core of our business, so looking after the fish, but that is not the only piece um, as we keep highlighting. We have roles across um, our business that allow for massive participation participation across the spectrum of skill sets. We, we do have biologists and fishery scientists that work on the fish and, um, and hone in our husbandry practices um, to make them most efficient. But at the same time, we also have all these other pieces of it. Um, we have construction team. We have a harvest and processing team. We have office administration, sales, marketing, logistics, all of the things that go into this. And these are just the groups that you see wearing the Kingfish logo. It doesn't account for all of those support functions that we rely on within our community um, that, that make our facilities run. So your local electrician, your local plumbers, um, your local machinists or, or mechanics, those are all skills and personnel that we will rely on for the long term. Um, that's why that you will see hopefully in the coming quarter that um, 
we are starting to engage those people in upfront construction because ultimately if they build it, they're the ones that know it best. Um, so we really look to integrate the community into the process early on so that long-term they're engaged with us. Um, a good kind of anecdote from our Netherlands facility is that one of the local farmers um, happened to know our COO um, and he was closing his farm down um, due to some changes and uh, he talked to Case, had never farmed a fish in his life, um, but came on board and now almost six years later, um, he is our uh, lead of maintenance and construction, um, but also knows more about the recirculating aquaculture systems than probably anybody else on the team. Um, and we, we could not survive without him, I don't think. Um, but it just goes to show that um, those skill sets um, are changeable, adaptable to bring in and allow for development of new technology right in our own backyard. And with that, I kind of want to open it up for questions, anything I can answer and, um, and talk more about Kingfish, but also all of the other new developments that are coming to Washington County. Um, and I wish you guys all a great summit today. Megan, thank you. Um, so we do have a few questions. Um, we had one in the chat earlier. Um, what is done with the waste that's filtered out of the water and can it be used? Yep, so one of the big challenges that we have um, is, is the production of waste, um, like any farmed animal, fish poop, <laughs> what can we say? So um, with that solid waste, which makes up the bulk of, of the manure, the biggest challenge we have in farming a marine species is that that solid waste has a high salt content. So in terms of field application, we're kind of limited, but in the Netherlands, we have really worked to see what other opportunities we might be able to have with it. And we have found ways that we can use it in agriculture. So currently we do um, collect and concentrate that waste and it is cut with pig manure and used in field application. We also have teams that are looking in terms of biogas opportunities. Um, and we've already engaged some groups here in Maine to look at what potential we might have um, to do that. In terms of other wastes, um, we also have the processing waste. So the heads, racks um, of the fish, and we are working um, closely with some of the groups locally um, to use that for, um, for organic uh, compost. And um, I'm sure most of you are familiar probably with the companies that we're talking about, um, but they all are right in your backyard. And this is something that we're already doing in the Netherlands. In terms of overall aquaculture opportunities for our waste, there are several groups looking into utilizing um, some of these waste products. So like processing waste, so the, the racks and heads for um, other pet food diets. Um, and, and um, making the most of that product. So it's something we continue to look at. We, um, because of the species that we farm, we have those benefits that we don't use a freshwater resource, but we, we have the downside that we have a little bit tricky of a process utilizing that waste. Thank you. Um, how do you move the fish, especially the small ones between the tanks? <laughs> um, so they have, um, well, in different different sizes, different different processes, but um, a lot of the the smaller fish are hand graded, so um, they are put into boxes that have bars that are um, a few different millimeters apart, um, so that ones that are smaller slip through and stay in that tank. Others um, that stay on top of those bars uh, get lifted and moved to another tank. As the fish get larger, um, more sensitive to handling stress. They um, work through an automated grader where basically they get piped around the building. They have their own almost mail, mail system where uh, they get sent via pipes um, filled with water um, through to other tanks. Um, and essentially it lessens the amount we handle them. So it lessens the amount that they mind. <laughs> I know we're getting towards the end of time, but um, 
have you thought of what is your plan for training? Uh, we have a question about whether you've established or, or spoken with our local community college, Washington County Community College. Um, what sort of skills you'll be training for? If you could speak to that, please. Absolutely. Um, I think um, I think Nicole Sawyer is maybe on this call. I saw her name pop up earlier. Um, we have spoken to Washington County Community College. They have a new marine program that is excellent, and we are excited to be a part of that and serve that as best we can. Um, our, our goal is really starting at the high school level, um, just getting kids familiar with the system, the concept, how it works, um, but then also adding to um, those other programs that are already in existence. It's one thing that we have seen that Maine does exceedingly well, which is to network their education teams. Um, so we've spoken with people at Maine Maritime, we've spoken to Washington County Community College, we've ongoing discussions with UMaine, um, all about their programs and what we see the need being. Um, and I think the ability to reach young people is, is the easy part. Um, you know, there are kids that are excited about all the aquaculture opportunities, whether that's oysters, um, on, in the water, whether that's land-based facilities um, like ours, um, there's excitement there and there, um, there are skills that we can train for in the classroom, but also hands-on. And what we're working to do is establish um, a tie-in to a lot of those existing programs um, where we have an internship program that can lead to long-term employment with us. Because a lot of the skills that we utilize, mechanics, biologists, harvesters, it really comes down to getting your hands dirty and, and on the job experience. Um, and we worked with uh, Dodie quite a bit about that as well um, to move forward. But um, I think the other challenge that we have, and it's one that's come up in a few meetings that we've said is, there's a lot of, of skills already here in Washington County that um, are perhaps in the more adult population that we, we don't quite know how to reach. Um, and I think that's the big challenge we have um, is seeing how some of those folks that maybe wanna diversify or, or change tracks, maybe they, they wanna change from lobster fishing and move into fish farming. Um, we wanna offer those opportunities and we wanna reach those people and say, hey, you've got so many of the skills that we need. This is just adapting it for a different species. Um, and so um, I think that's something we're still looking for good connections on. Megan, well, thank you. And I apologize that there's some great questions in the chat we're not going to get to. Um, but Megan, thank you. Thank you very much for this presentation. It's exciting to hear about the project. It's really exciting to think about what it could mean for Jones Board in Western Washington County. Um, in the coming years. Um, and it's a great, great way to start the day. So thank you so much thank for you. having us. And we'll be moving into breakout sessions now.